got some good news and I got some bad news. The good news, I am the bad news. In this video, we're gonna go over how to tune a four channel amp with the multimeter, as well as kind of explaining like what all the different settings mean and how you might adjust them to get the best possible sound and performance from your setup. I can still hear it super clear. I don't know if the microphone can, but I can still hear it super clear. The get away from it, the more I really like take in how good they sound and shit. Right? Like it sounds pretty good from yeah, far back. I, I was like, wow, it's still sounding solid. <laughs> As an example, I'm going to show you using the install I did in my car a few videos back. So a few videos back, I installed some Def Bonds Arnold 6.5 and, and a Down for Sound JP284 4 channel amp to power them. In that video, I didn't really go over what all it took to actually tune the amp because I knew that would be a good topic for its own video. That's what this video is for. Before we dive into the how, we're going to talk about what it means when people say they're going to tune a car audio amp in the first place. Tuning an amp is the process of adjusting the various settings so that you can get the best possible sound quality and performance performance from your speakers. All right, let's see what we got. So most four channel car audio amplifiers are gonna have high pass filters, low pass filters, gain settings. They might have some slope adjustments, sometimes some multipliers. And where you put each one of these settings is gonna depend on a lot of different factors, including your speakers, how much power they can handle, and how you have everything wired up. We're not really gonna dive too far into the different wiring options because honestly, that could be a topic for its own video. But we are gonna dive into what filters do, how to set them, and how to set the gains with the multimeter. All right. The first thing we're gonna go over is gonna be the high pass and low pass filters. Filters can be confusing because they actually affect the opposite of what's in their name. So a high pass filter allows the highs to pass but blocks lows, whereas a low pass filter allows lows to pass through but blocks the highs. So the high pass filter is essentially for setting the lowest frequency that you want the speakers to play and the low pass filter is for setting the highest frequency that you want the speakers to play. Where you set the filters is gonna depend entirely on the speakers that you're using and what they recommend that you set them at. So like most subs will recommend that you set the low pass filter to somewhere around 80 hertz to 120 hertz or something like that. Whereas a speaker might be from 120 to say 8K and a tweeter might be from somewhere from like 4K and up or you know, something like that. So where you set the filters entirely depends on the speakers you're using and what basically is the recommendation for those speakers. Some amps will also have a slope adjustment which is basically like the strength of the filter and it's usually measured in dBs per octave. Just to keep it simple, an octave is just double or half of the frequency you're at. So up an octave from 40 hertz is 80 hertz. Down an octave would be 20 hertz and, and you know so on in both directions. So for example, a high pass filter with a 12 dB slope that's set to 150 is gonna be 12 dB lower by 75 hertz. And since the low pass filter is for setting the highest frequency, the slope on the low pass filter will affect the octaves going up. So a 12 dB slope on a low pass filter set to 8K is gonna be 12 dB lower at 60 16K. So hopefully you understand slopes now and, and what they mean. If your amp has a slope adjustment, the best bet is to just set it based on whatever the speakers recommend. But we'll come back to that in just a second. The last way to control the filters is to use the multiplier switch if your amp has one. Literally all these switches do is multiply whatever frequency you have the filter adjustment set at by whatever the multiplier is. I think the most common ones are like one and 10. And these switches are just useful depending on how you're wiring up your amp. The last thing that we're gonna cover before we actually tune the amp is gonna be the most obvious one, which is the gain. What you're actually doing is matching the input voltage of the amplifier to the output voltage of the head unit. The reason you do this is both for quality and performance. By setting the gain, you're basically setting the amp to be in the same range as the radio. So the quietest signal from your head unit isn't so quiet, the amp has to work extra hard to amplify it. Or the problem could be the opposite, where the quietest sound is plenty loud without being amplified and the loudest sound is just completely distorted. So now that we understand what it actually means to tune an amp, like what all those different settings are, I'm gonna show you how I did it in my car. Most car audio speakers that are even halfway decent are gonna include their recommended filter settings somewhere, you know, in the instructions or like on the box or somewhere. The Def Mons Arnold 6 and a half that I installed in the doors recommend the low pass filter be set between eight and 12K with a 12 dB slope and the high pass filter, and they have two different options here, be set either between 150 and 2 
250 if you're using a 24 dB slope or 250 and 350 if you're using a 12 dB slope. So what they're saying basically is that you can send them a slightly lower frequency signal as long as you set the filter a little steeper. On the amp side, we're using a down for sound JP284. On this particular amp, the high pass filter and the low pass filter are clicked. So instead of being just like a wheel that you just kind of turn, it's you know, it's actually like little clicks. And the owner's manual tells you exactly which click is which frequency. So you always know exactly which frequency your filter is set at. And there's 41 clicks, which is pretty helpful. For our def bonds, for the low pass filter, we're gonna be choosing between clicks 36 and 41. That's the ones that are best for the speakers. And which one we actually use is gonna depend on the tweeters that I end up using in the future. I'm also gonna use the times 10 switch. I want between 36 and 41, let's see. 36, which is 7,777 hertz. For the high pass filter, we're either gonna be using click 22 or 23, which would put the filter at 145.9 or 157.1. I'm gonna turn the high pass filter on times one, and it's gonna be at click uh, 22 or 23. If I set both of them to the lower number, just for reference's sake. I ended up deciding to set both filters to the lower number because I really want these speakers to shine in the 150 to 8K range. That's pretty much like what I got these speakers for. Anything higher than that is gonna go to the tweeters and anything lower than that is gonna be split between the sub and the mid bass speakers that I'll be installing later. Before you actually set your gains, you need to do a little bit of math. You're just gonna take how many watts RMS you're gonna be needing per channel and then you're gonna multiply that by the ohm load that you're putting on each channel. So for me, I'm doing one speaker per channel. So it's easy math, 300 watts RMS times four ohms. So that gives us 1200. You take that number, 1200, and you find the square root of that number, which is 34.64. And basically that's gonna be the number that I'm gonna be looking for on my multimeter. I'm gonna use a one kilohertz track at minus two and a half dB, just cause that's the one I have. And I'm gonna turn that one up, go to my number, and then just try to get my AC voltage to match 34.64. Now that you know the number that you're looking for, 34.64. First of all, make sure your speakers are disconnected cause otherwise it'll get loud real quick. <laughs> you're gonna wanna play a one kilohertz test tone at the highest volume that your head unit can play without distorting, if you know it. If you don't like actually know that number, the most common advice is pretty much to use three quarters of your volume. So just take your max volume, multiply it by 0.75 and just go to that number. So for my head unit, my head unit goes to 40. So I do most of my testing and amp setting at 30. There's definitely a lot more precise ways to do it. And before somebody gets in the comments telling me all the different ways I could do it that's a lot more advanced, I already already know you can do it more advanced ways. That's not what this video is about. Thanks though. But anyway, after you do that, then you're gonna set your multimeter to volts AC and you're gonna put the positive and negative leads from the multimeter into the positive and negative speaker outs on the amplifier. And then basically just play your test tone and adjust the gain until you get your number. You'll definitely wanna take it slow because getting it precise can you know take a little finesse on those little screws. A quick little note on the one kilohertz test tones. This is only for when doing like voice speakers. If you're doing like a subwoofer, or a mid bass W81ACs or something like that, obviously you're gonna wanna use a frequency that's a little more appropriate for that range of speakers. So sometimes you'll see test tracks that peak at zero dB or negative 10 or like there's a whole bunch of different options. And the reason you might choose one other than zero is basically just to squeeze out just a little bit more volume. The idea is to make things as loud as possible without distortion. And since some music is mastered a little bit lower, you can get away with gaining the amp a little bit higher, especially with a lot of like older music. Current music is mastered very hot, so using zero dB is more recommended. But if you primarily listen to a lot of older music, you can get away with tuning it a little bit higher. And I mean, there's nothing wrong with just trying a few different test tracks and tuning to each one and seeing which one you just like more. So the reason using a test tone with a peak at negative 10 will give you a louder volume than a test tone at zero is mostly because we're talking about digital audio where zero is the max and anything above that is distortion, is clipping. Along with that, you're basically setting your amps zero or your amps max at your radios negative 10. So you're basically setting your amp to be, you know, a little bit offset from your radio in a way that makes the radio louder. But it can potentially introduce some hissing at the lower volume. 
and it can introduce some clipping if things get a little too hot. But again, there's there's nothing wrong with just trying at zero, see if you like it. If it's not really enough, try it at negative 10. If it's too much, try it at five, you know, try it a couple different things, you know, nothing wrong with that. But yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much the process of tuning a four channel amp and with the multimeter. Guess who's back again? <laughs> Since I haven't installed the other two speakers that this amp is going to be powering, I didn't have to do anything to the third and fourth channels. Well, in a future video, when I install these Defbonds Arnold APW, what, what is it? W81ACs, these mid bass speakers, I will definitely be uh, basically doing the same thing again, but just using different filter settings. Anyway, thanks for watching. I really wanted this one to be kind of informative, so let me know if it was that or let me know if I kind of missed the mark a little bit. And if I left anything out or you know a better way to do something, please definitely leave it in the comments that we all benefit from from the shared knowledge if you've never seen my channel before the channel is normally about car audio but i'm into pretty much anything custom cars or diy maintenance and modification related so there's a lot of that in this channel so if you're into that kind of stuff i definitely recommend you subscribe you can also check me out on instagram and tiktok at the bad news the abdnewz you can support the channel by checking out the links in the description some of those links are affiliate links which means that as an affiliate i'll receive a small commission you'll pay nothing extra and it's just a nice way to support the channel and with all that said that's pretty much all i got for this one so i'll receive the bad news first Skirt. Yeah, that one was good. Yeah, see, he knows. See? <laughs> see?